so run that you may obtain. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Dear seminarians and dear faithful, today we see a change take over in the liturgy. We see that the vestments have become violet. We see that the Gloria and the Alleluia are said no more. What does, what does this mean? Why have we changed all of this? What, what do these things symbolize? Well, we're familiar. Violet usually is the sign of the penitential. And in such penitential seasons, we don't celebrate the Gloria or even utter the word Alleluia anymore. And why? Well, surely it's not Lent yet. It's true, it's not Lent yet. And actually, that is why it is already in violet with no Gloria. We have entered the season called Septuagesima, and this word signifies 70, or 70 days. 70 days to what? Well, Easter. Easter is roughly 70 days away from here. That means 30 days to Lent, and then Lent is 40 days, and so the 40 days fast of Lent. Lent is something very important. It's the season of mandatory penance for the children of Holy Mother, the Church. She knows that if we were not going to be forced to do penance at least one time a year, we would probably never do it. And is that so bad? Well, penance is something very important. Our Lord warned us in Scripture, talking in his preaching, in his three years of public life, unless ye do penance, you shall all likewise perish. He's not talking about death. Men who have done penance have still died the death. But what he means is the worst kind of death. Hell. Yes, we are a sinful, guilty race. We have original sin. And the wounds of original sin, after baptism, after the original sin has been washed away, we still have these wounds left over from it, which incline us to sin. And not only is our nature marked or wounded by this, this first sin of Adam, but also our countless personal sins, varying from mortal or venial in their degrees of intensity. We are a sinful race. And if we don't do anything to check those inclinations to sin, then those words will apply to us. Unless we do penance, we shall all likewise perish. Well, yes, we understand that Lent is the season of penance. Then why do we have this, this kind of pregame, if you will, of, of violence, of kind of warnings and preparation? Why not continue to, to celebrate the, the glories and the joys of Christmas up until Lent? Well, that's something that's kind of inhuman, actually. To go from this abrupt change of we just been celebrating Christmas to now we're, we're putting ash on our forehead and doing penance. That's not very human. There is normally, in all things human, a, a transition, a warm-up, conditioning. Would a man who is about to compete in the Olympics a month before the Olympics just sit on his couch for a month? No. He risks hurting his muscles and when he, when he performs his, in his race because of the intense strain all of a sudden put upon them. And so too, we have a race that we're in. And we're encouraged to get back in that race. And that race is our salvation. But we're all pushed by Holy Mother of the Church. Like a good mother, she knows what's good for us. To get back in the game, if up until this point, we have just sat on the sidelines. Yes, we've heard in today's epistle this comparison to life, to salvation, being like running in a competition. And St. Paul's writing to the Corinthians who are familiar with the Olympics and being in Greece, they, they're aware of this. And we're aware of this with kind of the precedence that sports even has in our culture today. That in today, people dedicate their entire life to conditioning, to training, to technical skill, prowess, strength, and might to compete in one game. And in that one game, 
there are, it's full of people who have dedicated their lives to win that game, and only one wins it. And the reward they, they receive, it's not even lasting. They can lose it. The money they, the prize money they win can be burnt in a fire or spent really imprudently. Or the title that they won can be taken by another the very next year. People dedicate a lot for a simple, short, short-lived glory. However, we, we run in a race, this life, salvation. And if men dedicate their lives for a corruptible passing glory, why don't we dedicate it for the eternal reward of heaven? And this race really is living in self-denial, denying the inclinations of self-love. And lucky for us, as St. Paul says, you who dedicate your life to this race, you have not just a better reward to receive, but any man who competes, and every man who competes, can receive this reward. And this reward can never be taken from you. Let's think about that. Why don't we dedicate ourselves to this? Just like a man who's a, who is a, a pro football player has a coach to help him eat healthy, to train well, to invest so much money in every moment of his time for the next season of football, to hopefully go to the Super Bowl. Why don't we have the same or even more dedication for an even higher and more profitable goal? Well, maybe it's because of original sin. And maybe we're asking ourselves, well, I haven't really taken previous Lent seriously. I haven't really taken my Catholic faith seriously. Why start now? It's too late for me. Well, Holy Mother Church is very wise and has anticipated this question. That's why she gives us today's gospel. What happens in today's gospel? Well, in a nutshell, a man goes out to hire men to work in his vineyard. And he starts at the beginning of the day, which is, okay, roughly dawn, six o'clock, when people go out to hire people and bring them into their fields and work. And he makes a contract, I'll give you a day's wages. To the Romans, that's the word for the penny. But he goes out throughout the day, and he finds men who weren't really interested in working or didn't care, who were just sitting around, even up until the 11th hour, which is literally, there's one hour remaining of daylight to work. And in the end, when he calls them all to give them their wages, even if they got in the game to work in the vineyard the very last hour of the day, they still all were offered the same reward. God's telling us the same thing. If we have not been concerned about him until this point, if we've never really thought about, really, the punishment of hell and learning more about my faith so I can love more the God who has created me, well, it's not too late. If, while there is life, there is still hope to run in this race. And if we run, we can receive the same reward, heaven. And so, kind of in conclusion, there's three themes, three things we can ask for in this 30-day preparation period, this conditioning to get us back into shape, to run the race of self-denial, to keep our salvation within reach. Three themes, three graces we should be asking for this season of Septuagesima up until Ash Wednesday. The first grace of these three things is humility. We ask for the grace of humility. Why? What is humility? It's living in truth. That's really what it is. And the truth is, we're a sinful race, and we are sinful people. The race because of the wounds of original sin, the people because of our many actual personal sins. And if we keep this before our eyes, then this will be what, what spiritual authors call the soul of your fasting and penance. It's the drive that any athlete has when he competes. And it's true, you see it in sports. A man who has a goal, who has an, even a, a, the, the more noble cause to compete, maybe somebody needs prize money from running Olympics or the gold medal to pay for treatment for cancer for his beloved wife. Well, he's going to have more of a drive to fight, to win, to win that gold medal than any man who just is there because he was pushed into it and didn't really want to be there. This is our drive for the race, that we're sinful. And without penance, which is actually medicinal, we could be lost 
and lost for eternity. And so this is the drive of the athlete that we ask Holy Mother Church for today. The second is this spirit of petition, just of asking in general. It follows from the first thing. If we see that really we're, sin, we're, we're sinful and that we can't really do much good on our own, then we need to be aware of that and begin asking for help now to realize that if we're relying on our own strength for Lent and for anything really in life, that we're going to find out very quickly how weak and fragile human nature really is. And so we need to turn to God now, starting now and for the rest of our lives, the spirit of petition, realizing we can't do anything really of our own. And if we want lasting results, penance that's of salvific value, then we need to start asking God and place our strength and trust in him. And finally, the final thing we need to start doing and asking for in this season of Septuagesima is actually to already start doing some penance. A little bit, just a, a little bit, however light and small. Why? It's not Lent yet. Why rush it, Father? <laughs> okay, true. It's not Lent yet. However, just like we said, if a man knows he's got a football game and just the week before he's, before he competes, it's a big game and he's just sitting around eating potato chips, he's in trouble for that game. He has to start getting in shape little by little. And that's what this time is for to begin already just saying no to self. And while doing so, we might realize in these three weeks or 30 days what penance we really need to be doing for our salvation's sake for the 40-day period of Lent so we don't waste it. And so these three things, the spirit of humility, the spirit of, of per petition, and already of a little bit of penance is what Holy Mother of the Church suggests to her children today. As a good mother, she knows exactly what we need, even before it even dawns on us. And so, let's also turn to our Blessed Mother, the mother of all men. She's acutely aware of the sinful condition of the human race. And now that she is queen of heaven and earth, she's in a position to help us. And she wants to, if only we would go to her to receive that help. And so, as we return to the altar to complete the Mass, let us turn to her and beg of her the, these three things, the, this theme of Septuagesima, begging her of this spirit of humility and the spirit of petition and to already begin conditioning, to begin training for the race. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.